What's up guys? So the new year is about to start and it is our goal to get you guys to start your own vending machine business. We get DMs every day of people asking us, how do you start a vending machine business? So today we're going to break it down step by step. Knowledge. How to get into this business. So Donald and I have a vending machine business that does five figures every year. Oh. And I know it's so weird. You only hear six figures. So you're like five figures. What is five figures? Up to $99,000. Yeah. <laughs> not that we're close <laughs> not, to not, that. $99,000 and below. Not that we're close <laughs> to that, but like close. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, so we're going to show you guys how we got into it, what to do, how to find your first location. And yeah, let's get started. So the first step, find your first location. How do you find your first location, Sarah? Yeah. So there's multiple ways to do it. And as Donald and I state in our ebook, which you guys can find link down below, you can do multiple things. The first thing you can do is literally knocking on businesses around your door. And you start with like barber shops, hair salons, little restaurants, daycares, private schooling, which is like essentially daycares. Thanks. Schools and office buildings will be a little harder because usually they want like um, commission. Yeah, commission and Factories. contractual agreements, especially schools like with them for maybe five years or something. But if you start with these little businesses around your area, ask your parents where they work. Hey mom, at your job, do you guys have a vending machine? Oh, could you talk to your employer and see if I can get like, that's how you start. That's the that's the first way the second way is to go on Facebook marketplace and look for vending machine locations that are being sold so you look for vending machines that are being sold on location let me tell you this is a double whammy this is what you need to look out for usually they're on Facebook marketplace or offer up for like a week and that's it because people are feeding to get these so explain what is a vending machine being sold on location so a vending machine being sold on location is just a vending machine that has a location already like it's already on the location so no moving involved because vending machines are heavy like if you you can see me and say if you ever watch our like other videos we were moving a vending machine up the stairs it took us forever mm -hmm. putting it in the truck sliding it in so if it's already on location no moving involved but the only setback when you buy a vending machine on location you have to think why would someone be selling a vending machine on location usually people that sell vending machines on locations they're usually losing money on their locations so then they sell it to you guys at a loss so you have mm -hmm. to make sure that you're looking out for that we bought three locations all at once because there was a man who was selling his vending machine business and he had like over 50 locations 50 locations and we were like oh my gosh let's see if we can just buy three from him and he gave us a list of where the locations were and Donald was able to pick out the ones he wanted like this was God guys like this was a supernatural opportunity for us that we were able to get these three locations all at once and we paid thirty five hundred dollars thirty five hundred dollars eight Guys, vending machines this is a the way this was a steal this was a still like remarkable this was a remarkable still like three thousand dollars usually people sell one location we got three for the price of one what Guys, in, first, in, insane. For context, we bought our first vending machine location. These two vending machines on the screen, we bought for three thousand dollars. So the yeah. fact that we was able able to get eight vending machines, three locations for thirty five hundred dollars was crazy. If you break that down, if you do thirty five hundred, you divide that by three, that's a thousand one hundred sixty six dollars for every single location. Some of the vending machines that we got from those locations cost about like a thousand dollars. That was crazy. So if we were just to sell those vending machines, we probably would have made all the money that we spent already. So usually what I do, I put, I type in vending machine location for sale okay so when you guys scroll down you're gonna see like a bunch of vending machines like when you look at something like this this is basically someone that's trying to get vending machines to companies like trying to sell their vending machines to companies let me see right here 1700 this guy's just selling their vending machines so I wouldn't buy this let's see Look at that. It was at 450 for. Uh... Oh, yeah. This is a uh, ATM location. Oh, 450. I might, I, might, I might text this guy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let me see. So usually I check every single day. Sometimes you find some vending machines on location. I did see one this morning when I was looking. So look. So this location, I actually messaged this guy. I wanted to buy this vending machine, but the guy was giving me like a hard time. I told him $500. This vending machine, he's selling the, this vending machine. It's a Dixie Narco vending machine. He's selling it with the location, but the vending machine only makes a thousand dollars a year. A year. A year. So if you guys do the math on it, that's like that's eighty-three dollars a month. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. So I told him five hundred dollars from the vending machine, but of course he told me no. So what I usually do, I usually wait like a few weeks for these people, and then I'm gonna come back and tell them like, oh, four hundred. Like that's what I'm gonna do when he texts me again, like, oh, do you wanna buy it? 
So this is an example. Read the description. This vending machine has been low volume, a thousand dollars annually. Staten Island Collision Shop, several years. Boom, 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 boom. Um, ideal purchase for eight hundred fifty dollars. Blah, 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 blah. So this is basically a vending machine location. What else? What else? What else? This is a this is also a vending machine location too. Forty five hundred. So what we do when we're trying to find a vending machine on location? We take the, the sales price, so what the people are selling it at, and we divide it by 10. And whatever that number is, we try to make sure that that's what the vending machine is doing every single month. Mm -hmm. So if a vending machine is sales price that they're selling the vending machine and the location for $4,000, it needs to be making $400 a month. That's average, like $400 a month. That's how we will buy it. Lowball. Don't be afraid to lowball. They're selling for a reason, guys. Don't be afraid to lowball. See, this is a location. This is a very nice location. Credit card readers, Dixie Narco machines, AP snack machine. This is a very nice location. But, but the, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy it for $4,500. But it's all the way in. Yeah, I wouldn't buy it for, yeah, we wouldn't buy it for $4,500. This is all the way in uh, Virginia, too. So it's out of, yeah. out of our reach. But anyway. if you're in Virginia, guys, hit right. this lady up. Uh, this is probably the last location. Um... I did text this lady actually. If you guys want to see the conversation, I asked her how much does the vending machine do every month, but she never replied to me. So that's probably like a done deal. I'll probably pay like two thousand dollars for this location if we were paying. You would lowball at two thousand, and then they'll probably be like, "Oh no, I'll go three. I'll go three. And then you'll do like two fifty, and you just go back and be ready to negotiate because these people are gonna negotiate with. You. Okay, guys. So now let's move on to step number two. After you find your location, let's say you don't have the vending machine. You find the location, you cold call all these different businesses, and you finally get someone that says yes. The next step is finding the vending machine. On average, Sergey, how much should you spend for a used vending machine? I would say starting at $400 to $700 for a used vending machine. But if you're getting it from a warehouse, like a company that sells used vending machines, and they're providing you with renovation, cleaning, making sure everything's working, then I would be like, okay, I would pay $1,000 for this because they're providing a full package service, and I know I'm purchasing this, and I know it's gonna work. I would pay like a thousand and up to two thousand dollars for like one from a warehouse but if you're just buying it on Facebook marketplace from some random person who's not gonna guarantee anything yeah four hundred to seven hundred dollars definitely me and say okay we bought this vending machine for five hundred dollars we bought this vending machine right here for six hundred dollars so we just told you guys two ways so whether you could buy it on Facebook marketplace offer up in Craigslist for like an individual seller or you could go to a vending machine warehouse vending machine warehouse they're usually like refurbished machines that, they, that these people get in bulk and then they sell it to you at a discount kind of price usually it starts from like a thousand dollars and up mm -hmm. when it comes to these vending machines but to be honest with you the warehouses they are they're about their business but when you buy it off of facebook marketplace and stuff like we can give you story after story about the things we've witnessed like it's insane like going to this guy's house he's not even there he's on the phone with donald we pick it up we load it into the car we get back to the garage and we can't close the door to the vending machine and he's like oh there's a special way to close the door you have to get a piece of cardboard do this screw it then and twist it and we're like are you kidding you you sold us a vending machine which door cannot be closed are you kidding so the next thing we're gonna tell you is how do you inspect these vending machines so first you have your location somebody said yes to you that could be a barber shop an office building a factory whatever it is next you have the vending machine off or Facebook marketplace or you're going to the, the warehouse I suggest Facebook marketplace at first mm -hmm. if you could guarantee the location is a good location start with the warehouse but if you're getting like a, a right location Find it on Facebook Marketplace, offer up a Craigslist. So now you have this machine. How do you inspect this machine, Sick? If for a snack machine, how do you inspect it? So the most important thing when you're going to buy, you need to plug it in to see if it works. If they have no plugs, don't buy it. If they're saying, it. oh, we don't have a plug, oh, it's in my it's in my garage. How am I get an extension get cord? Get an extension cord. Thanks. Plug it in! It needs to be plugged in because that's the most important. Does it turn on? Because you'll be surprised these vending machines don't be turned on or they're like a slow starter like and then like oh my gosh it needs to plug in. Even we were trying to sell a vending machine and we couldn't find an extension cord. We have these people waiting for an hour because y'all not leaving until y'all see that it can be plugged in and it couldn't even be plugged that in. Was a, yo, we <laughs> that was tried such it, an that, embarrassing that was, day. That was, that was, that was the day. first day we were trying to sell a vending machine. It was such, we just did not know what we were doing. Like we were all over the place. But anyways, you need to make sure it can turn on guys. Then, so let's do, I'll do the snack machine. You can do the drink machine. For a snack machine, you need to make sure it takes all the coins. From pennies, even though vending machines don't necessarily have to take pennies, from pennies, like put every single coin in it, make sure it reads all the coins and that it pops up on the screen. Make sure that screen is working. You check the buttons, check every single button 
and then this is the tedious part you need to check the coils don't get a vending machine and the first row you check and then there's like rolls and some of the coils don't work check every single row check every single coil make sure everything is working and I think that's pretty much it for a vending machine also check if it's like super dirty and and gross you don't want a really gross vending machine like why why did why was it kept in this condition where was it previously that made it like you know ask those types of questions but make sure the coils work make sure the buttons in the mainframe work make sure the screen is working and make sure the coins are working for the snack machine you will not be able to get a dollar and get change back if the coin mech isn't filled with coins the machine is going to be be like I'm not able to give this person change so I won't accept dollar bills because I know if I take dollar bills I won't be able to give them change so what they do is they say we're only taking coins because they want to fill the coin mech up before it's able to take a dollar I, I don't know if you guys are understanding that rewind the video watch that part again it will not take your dollar bills if the coin mech isn't filled enough to give you change if that makes sense we're gonna put the coin mech on the screen so you, yeah, guys know what so we're you understand about. what we're talking about machine, so though. the drink machine guys drink machines are a little more complicated than the snack machines so when you're going to check a drink machine tell the owner 15 minutes before you're there tell them to turn on the vending machine remember like Sarah K said if they said they don't if they say they can't turn it on or it's in the back of my truck no deal no deal I'm not coming don't waste my time we have to turn this junk on I don't care if we have to go get a generator attach it put it in someone else's house like we're gonna make sure that this vending machine turns on so after you do that you get to the house it's on for 15 minutes put your hand in the condenser if you do not feel that it's cold do not buy the machine. Don't take anybody's word for it because too many people are lies out here. You feel me? Oh, it's just Don't taking a while to It's just to taking a while. Mm -hmm. Nah. Yeah. Remember, the same thing applies to the drink machine as a snack machine. You gotta test every single selection. So you put like, have them put like different bottles or cans. Because remember, every machine is different. Some machines just have the six selections, and then you have some of the big glass room machines where it has like a bunch of selections. So fill up the coin mech, test every single coin. So nickels, dimes, quarters, dollar bills. And if you're getting back chains, it works. The condenser is working. Stuff is rolling out the machine. Then it's a good deal, guys. The next thing, what makes a good location? I had three things. So I have seclusion. Make sure that's long hours, and make sure that's a lot of foot traffic. So I can explain what foot traffic is. Okay, so foot traffic would be the amount of people that are walking in and out of the building. Like, how many people are there daily during the week? How many people are there daily during the weekend? Um, we had a place that had a lot of foot traffic, and it was doing really good. And then we did a church, and we were like, oh, let's put it at a church because it has a lot of foot traffic. But the church isn't open except for Sundays. And then during the week only at night and it's older people and you know children are usually the ones who are buying from vending machines so it didn't necessarily have a lot of foot traffic even though it had a lot of people in the building there wasn't a lot of people walking in and out constantly like Sunday's your best day so this this location that had more people because it was a church it didn't do better than the other location that had less people but it had more foot traffic because it was like um, a beauty school or whatever so it's really important to find a place that has good foot traffic okay so long hours places like churches office buildings daycares like they're there for a very long time so they're more likely to use your vending machine also seclusion make sure that the vending machine if there's a bunch of stores around the vending machine people could always go to this store and yeah, this it's store gonna and this be store. a lot of competition it might yeah one of the first location we had there was there was nothing next to it like any food joints or anything the closest thing was like dunkin donuts that was like a mile away so we had we didn't have any competition so if you needed a drink you're like oh i'm gonna go over to that building because it's more convenient because, yeah so make sure like you guys don't have a lot of competition and it's in a secluded area where there's not a lot of food spots or anything because like think about putting a vending machine in a restaurant are you kidding you're gonna have so much competition because they're selling drinks and food and you have a vending machine no one's gonna buy from no your gonna vending, buy from vending machine you'll never go into a restaurant and see a vending machine there maybe like Walmart or Walgreens but how many times do you go into Walmart and Walgreens and buy like a water because there's water and snacks and drinks inside so it's like heavy competition you don't really want your vending machine there so the best combo that in our personal opinion is a snack and drink vending machine snack and drink right next to each other across from each other that's probably the best combination combo machines are smaller than um, snack and drink machines so you're gonna be refilling constantly if it's a very quick location but combo machines are smaller so they can fit into smaller spaces so make sure you guys are measuring doorways because sometimes me mm -hmm. one time we, we have to struggling. we're struggling we have to take a, a, a door off the vending machine to make sure that I fit through the mm -hmm. door so make sure that you're measuring these places out so now let's do a recap go Donald first you find the vending machine location someone says yes to you a business says yes we want you to put a vending machine in our location and remember this is the hardest step finding the location that's is the, the hardest, hardest step. step or you find it on Facebook marketplace whatever mm -hmm. now it's time to find the vending machine 
So you go, all the coils work, all the dollar bills, coins, everything works. And now you're ready to buy $500, $700, nothing over a thousand for a used vending machine. machine. From Only a personal seller. From a personal seller, nothing over a thousand, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's after buying the vending machine? After you buy the vending machine. You have to move it because you're moving on your own. So you, oh, we forgot about this. So you either get someone who has a truck, like Donald has a truck, or you have to get a U-Haul. And a U-Haul is going to be... A little bit of money. A little, a little bit, bit of money, guys. So that is another thing because since we were buying vending machines by ourselves, we were also moving them by ourselves. Like when you buy it from a warehouse or like someone who sells it professionally, they include in the sale, they include the moving fee, like a $50 moving fee or $20 or whatever moving fee. And they have their nice huge truck and they put it for you and it's beautiful. But now you're doing it on your own. So not only do you need a U-Haul or a truck, you need manpower. So make sure you have friends or your dad or your mom Three, four, or whoever to, move to help machine. you move it because vending machines are heavy like there are a ton like the location that you find make sure it has good foot traffic it's secluded so it's not around it doesn't have a lot of competition mm -hmm. make sure that you're putting the right vending machine so you know what what um whether it's a snack machine or a combo machine or a drink yeah. machine or a snack combo machine yeah also to remember we do full line vending there's other different types of vending machine there's food vending machines there's ice cream vending machines there's so many there's so other there's so many other types of vending machines so yeah like, so people say like too. trying so like you could look at it so you don't you don't only have to sell food guys remember yeah. that but so, uh experienced vending machine person told us don't buy don't buy ice food cream. vending machines don't buy ice cream vending yeah machines. hot food or ice cream machines food, food is ice cream machines yeah. don't do them coffee machines don't do them but i'm telling you don't be buying from them right like coffee machines and they, they, they're nothing but sugar moving part i got coffee machines they don't, they suck. They're yeah, headaches. They're good soda and snack machines, I'm telling you. Just from personal experience. These are the worst. If you lose power on one of those machines, you're going to lose your whole life. Like, don't even entertain oh, it. Don't, I've lost it. Next, after that, you have to start shopping. You go to a wholesaler, Costco, BJ's, Sam's Club, anything like that. We also go to Walmart, but we go to Walmart to get like special snacks, like um, special flavored drinks. flavored drinks that are different that you can't really find. In, Pepsi like, Cherry, yeah, like Pepsi stuff Vanilla, like that. stuff like that. Yeah. But Walmart is a little more pricey, so we don't necessarily go there all the time. Car readers, we don't have any car readers on any of our vending machines. We because did have older a car. models too. Yeah. Oh, also too, if you're when you're going to look at vending machines. MDB compatible means that you can put a car reader on your vending machine. If it's not MDB compatible, then you can't put a credit card reader on your vending so machine. So you can ask that. So the reason we don't have any credit card readers is because credit card readers charge you three ways. I don't really like that. I feel like it takes a lot of your profit away. They charge you to buy, if NAX at least, I don't know about any other companies, but NAX, they charge you three, they charge us $399 to buy the car reader. They charge you every sale and they charge you every month. So they take like, uh, like I don't know what it is, like 3% plus 10 cents, something mm -hmm. like that. For they every snack, lot. for every snack that's and sold. And the, the snack only a dollar, like, <laughs> How we, don't even, take? we don't even charge that much. You, you'll you notice, like, snack machines that have card readers, the snacks are usually more expensive because they're they're taking, like, mad money. But it does boost your sales, though, because, you know, more people have cards yeah. and it's more accessible. But yeah. In the future, we will get um, credit cards, but our, one of the machines that we bought the, for $500 is not MDB compatible. Okay, this is going to be the last part of the video. Different plays that you go wrong with vending machines. So, what we did, we bought three vending machine locations for $3,500. One of those locations wasn't doing really well it was having a bunch of problems we didn't want it anymore so we took that one vending machine location after like three months and we sold that vending machine for four thousand dollars that that basically we paid off the money that we spent and we made a profit yeah there was a time where we went to buy a location and they were selling it for five thousand dollars it was a great location fifty five hundred dollars like, yeah and we wanted to buy station. it three people showed up three different people one was us Another was this um, lady who was all by herself, and then another was a whole family. Like, this woman brought her whole family. We go in, we see the location, we're like, wow, this is great. Then the next girl comes in, she's like, wow, we, she sees the location, she's like, this is great. Everyone had their own turn being in there by themselves. The last family goes in, and they're like, wow, this is great. Here's the money, we're buying it. And we had the money. Like, and we we're like, everybody we, has the we money. We all outside. had the, the money. money. Why are you giving it to her? She's like, oh, she just said she wants to buy. Yeah, we all wanted to buy it! 
We all wanted to fight. Like I thought he was gonna do a bidding war or something. Like, yo, yo, six and he thousand. was just like, I got, oh. I got it. She was the first one to talk or to say like, I'll buy it. But we all wanted nah, to the, buy it. The other lady we was were mad. just trying to give everybody a chance to look at it. But it was just so weird. We should have done the same thing. We should have just been like, yo, yo, we ready, we ready. Here the money, here the money. But we were like, oh, you guys want to take a look? Go ahead. Let's say that a location wants a vending machine, but they don't want your service. You can sell the vending machine to them. That's what I would. That's what I would do. Oh yeah. So let's say someone's like, oh, dang. you can sell the vending machines to the business owner and say like I know you guys don't want to be serviced anymore or like we need to leave but before we go and sell it to just some random person on Facebook marketplace we're gonna try and sell, sell it to you. you guys that's a plus too all right so guys um two things when you're buying vending machines I didn't say this but try to find for drink machines try to find Dixie narco machines and royal machines for snack machines try to find AP vending machines stay away from Sega machines say we did it we made it through 2022 not only with a vending machine business but with an amazing support team from YouTube guys we're this close to being monetized we're so 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 close and we're just so thankful like this has been a great year we're at 2,000 subscribers we're almost at 4,000 watch hours like it just has been an amazing year and I cannot believe the amount of support the comments all the beautiful stories you guys share in the comments it's just been a lot and we feel loved we do we really do we really do feel loved we just want to carry this support over to 2023 and we just want to have a great year like it's going to be an amazing year new locations new businesses more subscribers we're going to be monetized it's just going to be great 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 Man, binge watch all the videos guys you feel me let it play on all your phones all your laptops if you made it to the end of this long video give yourself a pat on the back we love you guys donald say you love them I don't love y'all, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. And last deuces of the year. Deuces.